I, yeah, 25 years old. Um, I probably was at a point at that time in my professional career, it felt like I'd played uh, for 10 years. That's what it really felt like. Yeah. I was 19 when I, when I started playing professional rugby. That was my first year out of high school. Yeah. And I guess back in the early 2000s, that was considered very, very early. You didn't really see many players uh, playing professional rugby until around their early 20s. Professional rugby, it felt like I'd already played a full career. Yeah. And I guess I was quite exhausted. But because I was only 25, that, look, I'm young enough to actually take a break. Yeah. And then I, can, then I will think of coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think looking back now um, and understanding what mental health is, yeah. You know, I didn't really know. I mean, mental health wasn't as, um, there wasn't a lot, a lot of awareness around it back then. Yeah. And the yeah. big stigma around it back in those days, back in the mid 2000s was that, you know, mental health, or oh, there must be some or something wrong with that person. Yeah. Or, you know, it's, it's, that person's weird or yeah. that person's weak. Mm, or yeah. that's, oh, that's really unfortunate. You know, you kind of feel sorry for that person. Yeah. So there's that stigma around it and you didn't really, you know, that's that's what it was thought to be. And as I've learned what it is now, I'm starting to see that like, oh, wow, those were some of the symptoms that I was experiencing when I took that break and why yeah. I took that break. I was uh, mentally exhausted, but at least I put a lot of pressure on myself too much that I, like I said, I felt exhausted. And I think it was more mental exhaustion. I was just, wasn't aware of my thoughts back then and yeah. you know and mental health as well and so when i took that break yeah i almost didn't come back to play i actually decided to keep extending my break wow. so to speak yeah. and i i just um in that time i i spent a lot of time on my own yeah. i didn't want to talk about why i was on a break to anyone wow. i didn't really um kind of engage with my family as well i yeah. just you know, they were always like, how are you? What's going on? Are you going to go back? You know, and I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't, you know, it's, I don't really care right now. You know, I'm actually really happy. What I thought was I was really happy because I now wasn't under that pressure anymore. I didn't feel that pressure and I loved it. So obviously, you know, you enjoy something, you'd rather do it. So that's what I did. And it wasn't until I, uh, I was invited to play an invitational match. That's when I actually reconnected with everyone again and actually, realized how much I loved rugby without yeah. the pressures. And I was just, it was at that moment that I, that I thought, wow, what, what am I doing? Why am I, why am I not playing? I guess when I, when I decided to come back, only then yeah. did I really realize how much weight I, I, I gained. Yeah. Um, you know, I couldn't fit any of my rugby clothes. I couldn't fit any of them. Yeah. You know, I had to get new clothes, yeah, yeah. you know, and that was really like mind blowing. I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. And then when I jumped on a set of scales for the first time, wow, I yeah. was shocked. Because uh, us, you know, pro players, mm-hmm. you know, setting goals is really important. I guess for all sports, setting yeah. goals, setting targets, knowing, you know, when you go to the gym, you need to hit these marks in order yeah. for me to be in this shape or this condition. I need to be doing this, this, this yeah. on these days. I need to be eating this, this foods these foods i need to be you know i need to be managing my time accordingly so then i get these recovery because recovery and professional sport is probably one of the most important things your recovery rather than just the performances because if you can't perform every week then you're not going to win so you know just learn you know you know knowing all those things as a pro athlete those are really important and then once i had a goal that i'm coming back to play at this date then i started to work backwards from there yeah. okay i need to drop the weight within this time which means i need to drop the you know a kilo yeah. or two kilos each week you know and it needs to be consistent that's yeah, yeah. kind of how i did it and because the drive was there i guess that's what made it easier you know playing playing sport all my life yeah. you know i guess you get you get used to the workload you get used to that hard work that yeah. it becomes second nature so it was a hard, it was real hard to drop that weight. I mean, I was dropping about two kilos a week almost yeah. at some at some stages, and I was you know I was training with the with the team and then yeah. doing my own training in the evenings as well. Yeah. So it was two a days for a long time, and it was really just waking up, eat, train, sleep, wake yeah. up, train again, and then eat, go to bed. 
you know so it was just you know there was no, no time for anything else but i was just so determined to get back to that just to a good condition that i could compete again um yeah. so very hard but obviously um you know it's satisfying when you start seeing the results as well so yeah yeah um so another question uh, has talking about the pressure you face when playing when playing professionally helped you get over um your struggles and uh, your trouble with uh, absolutely absolutely and i wish i'd done it while i was playing yeah uh, because it would really it probably would have given me more clarity to actually just focus on what is important and that's you know the trainings and and playing yeah but uh I guess that at the time when I was, you know, to, well, towards when I came back to play uh, from that break, I was yeah. more aware of just how important it is to work on life outside of rugby, yeah. prepare for life outside of rugby. And it was a message that I took back to the teams that I played in, you know, yeah. and I was obviously coming back. I was, you know, in my late 20s. I was a little bit older now than everyone else. So I played more of a leadership role yeah. and I started to, to really push that message to players back then. So. Um, it wasn't until I actually came into this role here as a player liaison, yeah. um, you know, for the, our, 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 uh, our support program that we call Rugby for Life. Yeah. And it wasn't until I actually shared my story then with the players, our players here, yeah. because it was really important for them to understand mental, what mental health was. But it's really hard to understand what it is by just sitting and listening to a lecture or listening to yeah. someone talk about it. Yeah. So what, what I thought would be best was if I shared my story, yeah. then they would be able to relate, relate to it because yeah. they're also players as well. Yeah. They've also come from young ages to older ages. Mm -hmm. And I've been from, I've been very fortunate to have played about 14, 15 years where yeah. I've been gone, I've gone from young all the way through, you know, yeah. I've gone through one championships, you know, and world championships to being yeah. down and, you know, and uh, in, in really low points where I yeah. took two years off, off rugby. Yeah. You know, so I've been through the highs and lows and telling my story, the players were able to go, wow, I've felt like that or I've been through that. Story to the guys, or when I have to talk about that story, yeah. when I actually have to go through it. I actually, sometimes I get a bit emotional because I actually go back to that place. Yeah. But, but I know that it's a good thing to let that yeah. out because yeah. it feels like a huge weight off my shoulders. Yeah. It just feels like, wow, I okay, I can accept that that's what happened in my life. Yeah. I can move on. I've learned from it. And now I'm excited about what I can do about it now. So yeah. that's kind of the weight just dropping yeah. off. So every time I actually talk about it, I actually feel better about it. And that's yeah. the important message is for our guys. is like, if you're feeling like this, guys, at any time, talk to someone that you, that you know, that you trust. So talk yeah. to someone about it. Like, it doesn't yeah. mean just, oh, you just go straight into a conversation and talk about it. It's just bring it up. I think in, in terms of performance, you know, all eyes are on one person if you're playing that individual sport. Yeah. As a team sport, you know you're part of a group yeah. and you know that your contribution is important. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're willing to kind of go that, that extra further. Yeah. Always kind of, through my career, I always told myself I'm always going to live by one creed and that's I'd rather do something I'd regret than something I didn't. Yeah. You know, and I'd rather regret something and learn from it and move on yeah. than to not do it at all. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's the way I played rugby as well. I kind of didn't want to think twice because it takes yeah. too long. If I do yeah. that, you're going to get hit. Yeah. You know, so you kind of just make a call and you see a hole and you just go and yeah. you don't think about it. You know, so I kind of approach my life from that. Well, I'm starting to learn things about mental health as well, yeah. which is huge for me because I'm like, wow. I, I did a lot of those things, wrong things, yeah. because I wasn't in the right headspace. Yeah. And I look back to even further than that, why, why was I doing or behaving in those ways? Yeah. And it's because I wasn't happy with where I was in my career or yeah. having issues, like maybe relationship issues at the time that I just wasn't happy in. And I just acted out in a different way that wasn't yeah. helping my career. Yeah. And then I saw others go past me, my mates, my own teammates and things like that. I yeah. saw them all, their, their careers start elevating and that just just did my head and I, I'm like, why wasn't I going in the same pathway and it frustrated yeah. me more, you know? Yeah. So I didn't have the right things in place to help me get through those times. Yeah. Those are the, that, that would be like the only thing that I kind of regret as, you know, when I look back, but 
you know, I've, I, I was able to kind of achieve, well, I was able to achieve, you know, my ultimate dream, and that was to become an All Black. Yeah. 